right, so let me tell y'all real quick how I got to this video topic. Cause I can only imagine some of y'all are giving me a funny look right about now. Stop it. <laughs> Stop it. You know what you signed up for when you subscribed to me? Okay, so I was working on a review for a show called Little Bush, thinking it would be appropriate considering the current events of the week I'm uploading. Well, I tried to watch the show, and after six episodes, I tapped out. It was bad. Not good bad, not even interesting bad, just bad. So I, of course, yeeted that topic right off the schedule and realized that I had an open spot for the week. So what was I to do? Maybe a quick vid or something? But then it dawned upon me. What about that new adult animated movie from Filipino Netflix? The one with the anthro characters. That might be interesting. And folks, <laughs> oh, it was. Like, if my channel had checkboxes, then this movie almost filled all of them. We got adult animation. We got international drama. We got furious people who staunchly oppose this film and what it represents. What? All in all, I felt obligated to talk about Hayoka, also known as You Animal. So, let's check it out. Wait, hold up. Let me, uh cast a quick prayer of monetization to appease the gods of PG YouTube. I will not say bad words. I won't have impure thoughts. Uh, too late. So, who are the people behind this movie? In typical me fashion, I will probably butcher these names. But I am trying. Google Translate is my teacher. And that probably explains a lot. Like I said, Hayab Ka is a Filipino movie, and as you can imagine, it hails from the Philippines. The last time I mentioned Filipinos was with that Magellan movie, to which they did not like. And I don't blame them. Well, now they're in the driver's seat and had the chance to create their own animated movie. And that's a big deal to them. Something that I learned from my Filipino viewers is how often animation studios in the Philippines are used for cheap outsourcing from international animation companies. It's not an uncommon practice, nor is it really on the level, but it's a reality, and one that Filipinos want to change. They want to tell their own stories through their own ways, instead of being just used for grunt work. That's where Spring Films and Rocket Sheep Studio come in. They are both Filipino studios who try to provide original content from, you guessed it, the Philippines. As a matter of fact, Hayop Ka is the first and only adult animated film to be made in the Philippines. It's also the first Filipino animated film to be picked up for distribution by Netflix. This, interestingly enough, has been a contentious issue for people from the Philippines. What's more, I'm an American, so I can only relay information that I've researched and what I've been told from my Filipino viewers. So take that for what it's worth. According to my sources, the Philippines is a very Catholic country, and its people and government can be quite conservative. To those people, they see this movie as crass and off-putting. They don't like the sexual tone of the movie, nor the representation of certain facets of Filipino society, such as abortion or the wealth gap. Then there are those who see this movie as shedding a light on the hypocrisy of the Filipino government. Also, there are natives who have boycotted the movie, since one of the Filipino voice actors, Robin Padilla, has publicly supported the controversial president of the Philippines, Duterte. All in all, there's a lot to unpack here for those who aren't in the know about the cultural comings and goings of the Philippines. But that just makes it much more fascinating to me. It makes me root for the animation studios even more. Hell, a lot of my Filipino viewers have told me that they are going to support Hayop Ka no matter what, because they want to hold Netflix's attention and have access to showcase their stories to the world. They're the underdogs, they have talent, and I'm polling for them. Underdogs, get it? Because, like, their dog care and whatever. So, what's the movie about? Any of y'all familiar with soap operas? Well, brace yourself, because it's going to be like that. Our main character is Nimfa, a 20-something-year-old perfume sales lady who is a hopeless romantic and also yearns for better things in life. 
She doesn't want to be poor and have limited choices, and part of her frustration is due to her boyfriend, Roger. Sure, he's sweet and sexy, but he's broke, and Nympha is stuck paying for most things. We're then introduced to Inigio, a playboy business tycoon who runs into Nympha, and then boom, a love triangle is born and the drama starts to pour in. Who are you talking to? Why do you like him? Oh no, it's not like that. It's only for work. We're just friends. Or are we? No! You know, stuff like that. Along the way, we're introduced to a bunch of side characters. Here, I'll name a few. There's Nympha's rabbit friend from work whose name I forget. There's Jerry, the parking valet frog. And then there's Inigio's mother, who is desperate for a grandchild in order to secure the family's legacy. You know, characters like that. Oh, oh, and by the way, there is a Pepe the Frog and Jojo reference in this movie. <laughs> so Nympha and Inigio, I'm sure I'm saying his name wrong, become closer and closer and give in to their desires. But is it genuine or just lust? Roger grows more and more jealous and doesn't trust Nympha, which ultimately leads to a violent confrontation between the two. Actually, there's a lot of physical abuse in this movie. Kind of makes me wonder if that's a common thing in the Philippines, or if maybe this is just cartoon humor. Maybe both? I don't know. At the end though, Roger and Nympha break up. But a scandalous turn of events. Nympha is pregnant with Roger's baby. And Inigio proves himself to be a shallow man who never truly loved Nympha. I think he just wanted a three-way, and that was it. <laughs> so, what happens after that? Tune in next week to discover the shocking conclusion of... I'm just joking. I'm not going to do that. All right, so Nympha goes off and marries the frog guy? Okay. And that's the film, right? Didn't see that one coming. So, what are my overall thoughts about this film? Well, let's start with the story. I'll be real with you. I do not care for soap operas. Even if this movie is satirizing the genre. Look, I get it. Hayop Ka was deliberately self-aware and wanted to have fun with Filipino soap operas. But it was just meh to me. I wish they would have played it a bit more straightforward with the characters instead of treating them like a joke, but oh well. Interestingly enough though, this movie had bits and pieces of Filipino strife in it. The wealth inequality in the country, the high levels of teenage pregnancy, the abortion debate, civil unrest with police and protesters. All of these things are in the background of Nympha and her romantic escapades, and honestly, they are much more interesting to me. I wish we would have focused more on that, but eh, whatever. As far as the characters go, they're fine. Nympha is compelling enough to hold my attention, but she does come across as uncaring and vapid at times. Hell, the majority of the characters are that way, with their shallow and impulsive decision making. But I guess it's the point of a soap opera, right? The only good boy in this movie was Jerry the Frog, and that's it. The voice acting was solid, and from what I heard, there's supposed to be an English dub coming out in early 2021, so hopefully that's good too. But the main thing I love about this movie is the animation. It is wonderful, and I especially adore the backgrounds. They have so much heart and personality. I feel like I'm getting a genuine impression of the cities and people of the Philippines. Great colors, stylized, detailed. Mm great across the board. And the character designs are fantastic too. Not quite sure why they're animals though. I feel that Bojack and Beastars were better at justifying that reason and actually utilized it in their stories, while High Up Ka is just animals because why not? Eh, no big deal. Also, there's some pretty fun animated action sequences in this movie and stuff that felt very inspired by anime and fighting games of all things. Yeah, you punch that car. So, in conclusion, would I recommend High Up Ka? Yes, I would. 
It's not perfect, and it's definitely not everyone's cup of tea, but I can see the talent that went into this film. That Rocket Sheep Studio has potential to create quality and vibrant content that can reflect the culture and stories of the Filipino people. Also, I find it fascinating how divided Filipinos are about this movie. Like, there are those who think it provides an accurate representation of the country. Then, there are those who think that the movie is shallow and crude and makes the Philippines look bad. Hell, there are people who feel a combination of both. But I think the biggest takeaway from High Up Ka is how Filipinos want a chance to tell their own stories through animation. That they are more than just artists and animators who are used for cheap outsourcing. They truly want their voices to be heard. Hence why so many Filipinos are supporting High Up Ka, whether they liked it or not. They see it as a chance for Netflix and other streaming companies to invest in Filipino animation so it can be more than just grunt work used for outsourcing. Real talk, I admire that. And I hope to see Rocket Sheep Studio and other Filipino animation companies get a chance to tell their stories. We have to remember that there's more to this industry than just American storytelling, and it's healthy for us to get different perspectives from other parts of the world. Also, and above all else, fairy girls. And who doesn't want more of that? Like, if there ever was a unifying trait in all of humanity, that is it. And I'm here for it. Shouldn't have said that. Oh, God.